So the crypto market is crashing before our eyes. How far will it go? Well, I don't have a magic crystal ball to see into the future, but if you were new to crypto, this episode will give you some context to what we have seen in the past in times like this. Welcome to the Crypto Rain channel. I'm your host, Jay Rain. If you like money in crypto and you're looking for a seasoned investor's take on the crypto market, join the Rainmaker family. Do note, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a crypto investor myself. So this isn't financial advice. To join the Rainmaker family, well, we have a free telegram below. If you want even more interaction, you can join our private Discord. There are special things that people get access to in our private Discord, such as the pre-stream that we did earlier today on Fridays. Um, we interact very directly on a video chat through Discord and get to answer your questions and get to know you as well. We do want to thank our Patreon members that are members there um now if you haven't already make it rain on that like button and strap in for the show because the crypto market seems like it's crashing and in many ways it is for context do you remember back to last june or july let me share some charts because i don't know about you but charts help me remember so let's take a look here we go back here and this is east chart right we could also pull up bitcoin's chart um but east chart e was coming down off of its highs almost five thousand dollars but do you remember when everything was crashing massive collapses of luna then voyager then celsius and then later even ftx and alameda research and it just seemed like the bleeding would never end and then it did and you look at ETH, it hit a low of 1100 and then it started this little recovery period and came back down to those lows, almost hitting them. And I think this is the FTX collapse here. And then, and it was like, oh my gosh, we're just getting hit all the time. And then things were getting a little bit rosy and oh my gosh, um, it looks like the SEC has lined up a strategy to attack crypto as much as they can to try to pulverize it interesting right well right now a lot of the fud does have to do with what in the crypto industry we're calling operation choke point two so silvergate bank the sec going after kucoin the sec sending out wells notices which we don't have clear confirmation if that is the case that all these DeFi projects are receiving wells notices Probably that's true, but I can't say I know that that's true. Um, it's a rumor, and sometimes in the crypto space, the rumors going around are not all true. Sometimes they're purposely put out there to create FUD, to manipulate prices downwards so that big whales can buy cheap. And it does seem, though, the SEC is trying to cut off liquidity going into crypto. Now, there are forces that absolutely oppose trans the transparency and the strength of cryptocurrency and the strength that they can bring to financial markets because they can't wield power over that. And the dollar has been a very, very strong sword in a lot of ways. And there are a lot of forces that want the dollar to remain very strong. I think all of us would want the US dollar to remain strong, but rightly concerned that there are things that are destroying the value of the dollar, such as printing endless amounts of money and other manipulations and schemes that go on that are destroying the value. So I think a lot of us that are interested in crypto, it's not that we want the US dollar to fail, we want it to succeed. We're just seeing things that savage its future happen and we don't want an insurance policy because we don't see any end to that. And we don't want everything to be beholden to those special interests that are behind savaging the U.S. dollar to our detriment, you know, and to everyone's detriment who holds any U.S. dollars. So um, thank you for jumping in and joining us, um, Cloud Macro and Garong. I hope I'm saying that right. Hi, Rain. Do you think 20 million Omi can amount to 1 million in the bull run? Well, that would take it to 5 cents. Is that possible? It's absolutely possible. Will it happen? Don't have a magic crystal ball, but I sure hope it happens. 
Um, Grong also asking if well, my thoughts on you, Ultra, Gala, and Magic. Um, yeah, we'll get into looking at some of your suggestions. I'll probably look at maybe one or two of those. Uh, but yeah, let's kind of go back to the bigger setting of what we're going through. Now, a lot of people in the crypto space are new. Now, don't you find that odd? Why are so many people in the crypto space new? Because crypto has been around for a long time. Why am I considered an OG? I only got started in 2017. There should be millions of people who got started with 2000, in 2017 that are still around, and yet they're not. Why are there so few people around that got started in 2013? And the reason is, is times like this, times like this crypto winter that you've been going through and yet you're still here. So you should congratulate yourself. Had a really interesting comment slash question in the private Patreon group when we were doing our call earlier. And the question went something like this. This sounds too easy um, that all I have to do is buy these projects that are undervalued while the prices are low and everyone's scared and hold till like they do really well, it sounds too easy to be true. Are you sure that's all it entails? It literally is that. Um, keeping in mind that some of the projects may fail. It's, we don't know, but it literally is as simple as that. Now, obviously, which projects you buy makes a difference because some will succeed. Some will go 1,000x, 2,000x, 3,000x, and some will do 5x from the bottom to the top. So which projects does make a difference? And a lot of what I try to do is research to make my own conclusions as to which ones I like and which ones I think have the best chance to do well. But it is that simple. But simple isn't always easy because if you've noticed, if you look to the side, a lot of people are scared right now because U.S. regulators, the SEC, seems to be going after crypto. Now, for the U.S. regulators to have success, they either have to scare the other side so bad that the other side signs a plea deal or they then have to take it to court and they have to win in court. And it seems like in court, judges are tending it the feeling that the SEC has overreached their scope. At least that's my take on it. And so I don't know that court is going so well for the SEC. Now, there's a lot of organizations that don't have the funds to fight the SEC and the courts. And so they're just taking these plea deals. Okay. Um, thankfully, there are some companies that do have the funds and are fighting it out because that continues to chip away at this massive overreach by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Like our cryptocurrency security, securities were created to related to stocks in the 1930s. And I'm not even happy that that was done way back then. Um, because stocks were seen as the new boom and, oh my gosh, you know, you can do no wrong just investing in stock. And we've all, we've all seen those booms and busts. So a little bit of an overreach when the correction, people say, oh, we need more regulation. Well, there's a lot of people that got wrecked and they came in and made a powerful government in, entity and they basically banned regular U.S. citizens from being able to partake in the early stages of investing, which are risky, but that's where all the rewards are. And basically made it so that you could only buy stocks through a licensed stockbroker. And only when, after a, a company has had their initial public offering. So in other words, they use that event to exclude everyone who wasn't an accredited investor and not an institution from being able to in, invest in anything early stage and early stage where you can see some massive multipliers multipliers in fact they made it so that the regular u.s citizen could only buy at the initial public offering which is the exit liquidity for some of the team members some of the early vc investors when they're capturing and realizing their 200x gains it's being dumped on the public and that's supposedly safe that's what the SEC wants to see happen. 
is that you then become the exit liquidity that you don't have any access to things early stage because you're not informed enough. You're too dumb. We need to have all our friends have access. And keep in mind, Gary Gensler comes from this background, Goldman Sachs. Yeah, no, he wants to restrict it to access to all his VC friends that they can have access to our, all the early stuff and remove all the American citizens that aren't already rich from being able to invest in that so that then you can only invest much down the road and provide exit liquidity for all his friends and all being sold under the name of we're trying to protect you. And uh, here's the tell that the SEC has no interest in protecting you. Binance is bailing out Voyager. I have a friend that has significant funds tied up in Voyager, and I want him to be able to get that out. Binance is trying to do something that works for Binance and something for Voyager, and the SEC doesn't want that to happen because, I don't know, is it like, oh, my gosh, um, CZ is like from China, I think, originally, right, and trying to, I don't know, stoke like some kind of Chinese FUD or something. I don't know. I don't. It, it's a foreign entity. Yes. I, I've been watching Binance since 2017. I haven't seen bad actions from them. Um, I think uh, it's just his friends don't want Binance to get any bigger and more powerful. I don't have a problem with Binance getting big and more powerful because I've actually seen CZ look out for like all the people who are his investors in the early days and continue to give use cases to the BNB token. The type of behavior that tells me that CZ's probably an honorable guy. And uh, maybe there's information I don't know about, but um, I definitely question Gary Kinsler much more than I question CZ. Um, I've not seen such honorable behavior from from Gary Gensler, and maybe there's things I don't know about CZ, but um, definitely concerned that they're trying to shut down that acquisition, which then hurts a lot of U.S. people. So how is it the SEC is trying to help out U.S. citizens and protect them? No, this is a power grab. And I think Gary Gensler is working with bigger forces that just don't want crypto to happen in the way it's happening what they do want is a central bank digital currency which is devastating to uh the u.s it's devastating to the world because a central bank digital currency if a government can control your money in any country a central bank digital currency then they, they'll pair that with some kind of like uh government support credit rating to see how much you support the government. And then like, say you think the government's concerned because say they legitimately did something wrong and the, then you call that out. Well, then they're gonna disallow you from spending that central bank digital currency. Not for you being wrong, but for you rightfully saying that the government did something wrong, you'll be targeted. And I don't like anything that goes towards that type of a system in a central bank digital currency. It is absolutely that powerful that they can put programming in there. And sure, I'm sure the governments will come forward and say, yeah, but we would never do that. Right. And I should believe you why. So this is part of the bigger forces pushing towards central bank digital currency and cutting out the free market side of crypto, the technology innovations. That will absolutely change the world if governments can get out of the way. And what the U.S. is doing is just putting their own future with crypto at risk here because crypto is still going to happen. There are going to be countries if the U.S. is and the SEC is successful at what they're trying to do. These crypto companies, a lot of rich people in the U.S. will literally just move to other countries to help build out the future that blockchain and cryptocurrency can give us until the U.S. Re realizes the whole world is moving on without it. And when I say the whole world, it won't be the whole world. It'll just be select countries because there will be other countries successful at banning their citizens from participating if, if they could. Um, and so these other countries will benefit from the technology boom from crypto 
And eventually the citizens of countries like the U.S. will win out and change over the political leaders to where it'll eventually go out, go that way, too. So really what's at risk here is the future of the U.S.'s um, dominance in being the innovators in tech. And um, it's funny. So if the SEC is successful trying to do what they're doing, they will crush the U.S.'s dominance in innovating in technology and that tech will go to other places that'll be interesting to see who's successful there all right let's see what are your thoughts i'm curious to hear your thoughts on the market and what everyone is thinking now i get a little bit numb i've been in this for like since 2017 so what are we six years now boy that goes by fast um what are your thoughts on times like this? Are you getting worried? Are you worried that like it's going to crash and um, crash much, much further? Maybe it does crash much, much further. Uh, let me go back to a time frame where it crashed and then it crashed some more and then it crashed some more. And this is time frame I remember because this was my first crypto winter and I was trying to figure out how it all went. And so here we were. This is the crypto winter. Let me just circle it for you. In fact, I'm going to remove drawings entirely. So let me just circle this crypto winter. And I would say it really started sometime in like here. And it went all the way to about here. So this was where the crypto winter. So it wasn't till October 2020 that really we broke out and we're heading straight out. So this is what the, oh goodness, I don't have my screen shared. Well, okay, so here's the chart I'm looking at. This is Bitcoin's brave new coin liquid index for Bitcoin, which I like because it has some of the most history on Bitcoin's price action. So <laughs> this was the crypto winter here, starting sometime around March 2018, going through uh, um, October 2020 before it took off here. It broke up above and it just ran like crazy. So here was a point where there was a bunch of FUD. Now, there was this new virus that was infecting people in all kinds of countries and spreading to all kinds of countries. And the mortality rate was seemingly pretty high. And it is actually f uh, the first strain of it was fairly high. Um, not like high, like 20% or anything, but it was probably or maybe even around the 1% range. It particularly affected those with like poor lungs or say um, they're on dialysis or other things, um, obesity. Um, and even the elderly um, just had a hard time making it through, like pretty severe cases. Um, and if they end up having a cytokine storm, cytokine storm, um, their lungs would coat with this white fluid and they couldn't breathe and they would usually die on a ventilator. And that's where we were at this time that that was happening. And it was scary and, and businesses were shutting down. And so what the FUD was created by it was totally different from what we're seeing here but it was like oh my gosh you know um all these economies are shutting down across the world we don't know like how interested are people going to be in cryptocurrency when they're like uh, we're not even sure what food store like is going to look like people's ability to get food and so you see that it dropped and then it broke loose some more it went down to 9100 then it dropped all the way to about 7,800 and then bam, strong wick down. And then it corrected upwards, did this sideways trading for a while, broke up into this Bart Simpson. They call this a Bart Simpson pattern because it kind of looks like Bart Simpson's hair. And then bam, we were off to the races. Wow. Well, let's fast forward a little bit. Got a Bart Sim little bit of a Bart Simpson pattern going on, or maybe that's someone else got some horns. But we're seeing this. It was looking like the lows had been in, so we're at sixteen thousand. The low actually all the way down to fifteen five. We had broke it up, and now we're probably. I wouldn't even be surprised if we break back down to these 
this area here. And maybe this was our big FUD moment. This is the FTX collapse here. And so uh, that was pretty concerning with the FTX collapse and what other things would snowball out of control with that. And yet then we traded sideways and it was so resistant. It was really hard to push down. So then we got this going on and now we got another push to the downside. But to even reach our previous lows still has a ways to go. 20% retracement from here just to get down to these other lows of where we were at. Will we get there? Uh, I don't think so. I don't even think we'll get there. I think there are some good opportunities, um, definitely for some tokens that I've been watching that have come back down into price ranges that are very exciting for me. Like this is Alluvium's token, right? And I was hoping it would break back down into this area. And today it's at $60, which I can improve my dollar cost average position on this one. Um, I'm really excited about where its price is going. Let me look at a chart that's on the hourly and see what it's looking like. Look at that breaking lower and it's hit this support and then bounced up a little bit. I would love to see it come back down anywhere below this. Like even at the current price is pretty good. It's exceptionally good in my opinion, below 50 and maybe it goes, maybe I'm really lucky and it goes farther below that. Um, there's a lot of sales happening out there. One of projects that I follow really closely just broke this trend. But unfortunately, it didn't break it even stronger because it broke it. And then it came right down to this resistance point and it's had a hard time going below that, even though it broke this pretty strong trend here. Bam, it broke it, went down and bounced off of this. Um, and this FUD isn't having as much power as you would think it would have. And maybe there will be more waves of it, but I, I wouldn't even mind if it pushed prices down more for the coming couple months because if it can do that suppress prices for a couple more months especially the more severe it is i think a lot of indicators are turning bullish for crypto and that some money is going to come back into crypto and then things are going to do really well let's take a look at <clears throat> okay look specific to your question Garong, I hope I'm saying that right. I have first, you know, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that. Garong? Garong? Okay. So, Omi, your question is specific to, do you think that 20 million Omi can amount to 1 million in the bull run? So, the question is, from here, can it get to 5 cents? Well, let's go to a log scale. And let's change our timeline. In fact, this one might not even, yeah, it's not going to have the previous charts on it. So where it has to get to is going to make this look really small. It has to get all the way up to $5. Is that possible? Well, fortunately, I don't have tons of history on OMI on the trading view charts that I found. Because when it got changed from um, being on GoChain to an ERC-20, um, that history got cut off, right? So here's when that change happened. So we don't have that history of it going all the way up to 1.4 cents. So it hit this range here, 1.4 cents before. Um, can it go to 5 cents is your bigger question. So 5 cents, fact. can it go to 5 cents? I hope so. I hope so. Um, I don't know, you know, I, I'm pretty bullish on Ecomi. They've made some mistakes. Um, we're seeing those effects of the mistakes. And the mistakes that they made are just entrepreneurial mistakes. And you have to balance a lot of things as a business owner, right? That a lot of people don't understand if they haven't run businesses. And so uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, they were actually getting offers to buy percentages of their company. They had revenue coming in. Um, things were looking pretty good. I don't know how many offers they took to sell some equity to raise some capital. Had they done that, they could have hired some really advanced developers. And I think they wouldn't have been going through the growing pains that they have had the last year to year and a half. 
where they haven't developed fast enough. And development with good developers are expensive. So they have hired some development team. Are they as good as I wish they were? I don't know. We'll see. I hope so. I know that a lot of them, they're hiring from other countries. The very best, many of those come out of the U.S. Um, they come out of Silicon Valley, and they're expensive. You might pay 300000 to 500000 a year for somebody like that. Or if you get them not out of Silicon Valley, but equivalent level skills, but somewhere else in the U.S., you might pay 200000 a year for them. And I don't know that that's even who they're hiring. I think who they're hiring is, you know, people with some skills from other countries that they can pay much, much less. And I hope that that still works out. I do expect the pace of development and improvement will improve. They have a massive lead over most of their competitors because they have so much great intellectual property that I feel like they've lost some of that lead from some bad decisions. Hopefully their current decisions get them going well enough that they stay way ahead. Um, yeah, so can this get to five cents? I hope so. All right, let me look at uh, Maxwell Chromes. Do you still have interest in Zookeeper and Zoo games? They've been busy over there. They have been busy over there. I bought a ton, like eh, a ton, like 30 of their Zoo jeans. Um, and I did get access to race one around. I absolutely got clobbered by the other people. I did learn that you can use a controller and it's better. And I, so I haven't tried it with a controller. Um, but I'm not the best alpha tester. Um, like as far as like being a true hardcore gamer, I'm not really that. I like a small percentage of games and I do like to like test things to see where I think things can go. So I did play it. Um, I think the team has created something pretty fun. I hope they can release it in a way that everyone can easily do it. I think it will be browser based. So it's not going to be like so most people cannot play in it. And I hope it's successful because I have some really cool characters and these characters have different stats and their stats do affect your combat abilities as you're racing around the track. Think of like Mario Kart, um, but you own the different characters, right? Sailing on 2021. What's going on, my brother? Um, you know, always love having you join us and uh always has amazing comments he is in our private discord and he has some of the most amazing insights um i love the stuff that he shares bill gardner says great time to buy need more in all my bags i hear you there um yeah i've been working hard coming out of retirement um to get some some uh money through real estate so that I can buy more while things are low and I should have some money starting to roll in maybe in about three weeks. And hopefully it, I have some more things that might come in about six weeks. So uh, maybe I'm biased. Maybe I want the market to go down because like I, I want to buy some more. In fact, a metric ton more at these levels. And uh, three weeks from now, uh, we'll see where the price is. Maybe it'll still be down. Maybe it'll be down more. Maybe it won't even be down as much as it is. I do have some liquidity on the side that I'm probably going to pick up some more alluvium. Um, that's interesting. Fun fact, hospitalizations from the C word are the highest they have ever been. I did not know that. Huh. That is interesting. Okay, Bill Gardner says, Omi Alluvium Matic. Bill, great picks. These are the bags you probably want to buy a lot more of. I haven't looked at Matic's price lately. Let's look over that. Um, I'm with you on Alluvium. In fact, let me share my screen. Probably a lot nicer when my screen's shared, right? So, oh, Matic. Whoops. <laughs> uh, no, that's the market cap case. So Matic I was like something is massively wrong with that chart. Okay, so here we are in Matic. Okay, so I like Matic's future. Can I tell you what I like more than Matic right now? 
Um, and it's not like Matic is a bad one. I think Matic has done the right things that they're so going to be part of the future. Um, so their market cap is nine billion. I feel like they've earned all of that. They uh, they have done a phenomenal job with Polygon slash Matic. Um, great work by them. So their market cap is there. Let me show you another one that I'm very bullish on. It's got a cheaper market cap, but I think in some ways might rival what Matic is doing. And that's a mutable X. Now, one caution is they still have some vesting going on. So only 43% of their supplies in circulation and Polygon has 87%, so twice the amount in circulation. So do you realize that um, to compare apples to apples, like there could be some more pushed into this market and suppress the price further, right? Part of the reason that Immutable X has just gotten crushed um, is the general down market, but also token vesting. And a lot of their tokens vesting has helped push this price to where it's really attractive. And unfortunately for me, I missed picking it up here. Um, might get another bite at the apple on that. But um, I, I think a lot of great stuff is going to be on Immutable X. I know Alluvium that I'm following closely is on Immutable X. I know um, Vivi's collectibles are on Immutable X. Um, HRO is bringing their stuff over to Immutable X. So they're making the right partnerships to get a specific part of the crypto space on their blockchain. And um, I think it's going to do good. Now, I did have a bunch of Immutable X that I got because I was an early investor in Gods Unchained. And Gods Unchained was backed by Coinbase Ventures. And when ETH transaction fees were just devouring all the profits uh, from trying to sell any of your stuff see the transaction fees used to be under like a fraction of a cent even on the e-chain during the last bear market but then they got to like five dollars and ten dollars and twenty dollars and so you couldn't sell a three dollar card to somebody and a twenty dollar transaction fee so they made their own layer two called the mutable x and uh, they did a launch of it and i wasn't unfortunately able to invest in the pre-sale or anything but because i had bought a, a ton of their um their cards at launch i did get some tokens hold on let me just turn that down that keeps beeping and i sold them because i had seen the vesting once I got a look at the vesting and realized a whole bunch of these were going to keep vesting, I sold it at like six bucks or something and then five bucks. And I've been waiting to buy back in. And so, yeah, um, I hope it comes back down a little bit more um, because I would like to buy some more. So let me go on a smaller time frame, hourly time frame of what we're looking like. Yeah, nice. So it could have broken to the upside and continued up. And I'm not, you know, the, it, it broke down just like Alluvium did. So Alluvium broke down too. And both of them are going a fantastic direction for some cheaper pickups. Now, could it get way cheaper? They both could. I don't know. I don't have a magic crystal ball. But they're both in a buy range for me even now. All right. Interesting, Von Doom. There's a problem with the Comey's dev team at the top. They don't seem to know how to hire the right people. Um, I'm, I'm hoping with their hire of Mitch and I forget their CTO's name. Sorry, I'm just going to change this to standing. Um, I hope that goes well. We will see. So I'm giving them some more time. But a lot of the model they were going before was hiring contractors rather than like full-time people. So they've been going this full-time model. I'm not sure when they switched over, so I don't know when to start that time frame from. But that's, you know, a valid thing to be looking at as to whether that's a concern or not. 
I can't answer on my end. I, you might have more information than me, but this is a concern of, are they able to hire and retain the right people? I think that David Yu has shown better ability to get some of the best intellectual property agreements out there in the world. I mean, nobody in, nobody in the crypto space has gotten the kind of intellectual property to work with them than David Yu, nobody, not even close. And so that's huge. Um, might there be some problems on the tech side? I've had concerns about that. And so hopefully my, my hope was that they hire a really good CTO and that CTO could attract really good people and keep and retain really good people. I hope they don't have continued problems there. Smurfboy17 says, glad to be here. We're glad to have you. Maxwell Chrome says, Mo will also plan for Zoo Racers. That's going to be awesome. I think that'll actually be key is uh, the mobile behind it. It's pretty fun. I only played a little bit. So obviously I got schooled by all the people who had played it a lot and absolutely got wrecked by them. Um, let me go back up. I told Garang I would take a look at Ultra. So let's take a look at Ultra. And I'm going to open the door because with my computer's running in here, if that door's closed for too long, it gets hot. If it gets hot enough, my camera shuts off because my camera overheats. All right. So here we're looking at Ultra's price. Ooh, got juicy. The discounts. Okay. Well, that's exciting. I like massive discounts. And so it's not quite as cheap as it was here, but I remember this bigger run up and it ran all the way up to 30 cents and it's right back down to the 20 cent range. That's cool. Now, will Ultra survive ultimately? Well, I was really big on Ultra and I think I've heard that they have a number of partnerships. I don't currently still hold any Ultra, though. Um, if I had a bunch more that I could add in, some of my positions are locked up like long term that I can't even change it. If I, I, it's not, I guess I could. I would have to sell to some other people directly because their positions, some of it's equity and companies that you can't like easily sell. And so um, it's not like I'm against holding Ultra. Definitely some concerns there that. You know, big projects like Gala and Maria have come in and they're going to have their own interfaces and their own ecosystem. They'll have so many games within it that Ultra not being fast enough is losing market share to these competitors. But is 20 cents a deal? Um, I think it is a deal on Ultra. Um, because everything's price relative. Because even if Ultra doesn't become big enough to make it in the next over the next twenty years, is Ultra solid enough and big enough to do really well in the coming bull run? Even if it doesn't make it for the next twenty years, yes, it is. And so, if the price gets juicy enough, and look, it's close to these lows from here. Let's go to the daily. Boy, it's been a long time since it's been this cheap, right? So this cheap, it hit this cheap after it did its big run in early 2021. So it did go as high as 250. It's way down to 20 cents. So a uh, big retracement, 90% down. Um, good chart to look at. Gala, I'll look at Gala as the other one. All right, so Gala broke down out of this trend here. <clears throat> it's coming back down into cheaper zone. And this is the great thing about this level of FUD um, is it pushes things into really, really good buys. So Gala is doing the right things that I think Gala is going to possibly be around for 20 years. Um, yeah, I... I own maybe a little bit of Gala, not a lot, because I, I went really heavy on Myria nodes, and so it's a competitor in this space. And Gala is already so much more expensive than what I could equivalently get with Myria. So I felt like it was more prudent to sell all of what I had in Gala to roll it into 
what it could buy in Myria. Though, like, is Myria, like, Gala has the first mover advantage over Myria. Myria's got some, uh, a great CEO and some good team members, and they're constantly impressing me with the updates, but um, it's still earlier stage. Myria is than Gala. Gala is more of a known quantity. Myria, we'll see how successful their node launch is and how successful some of the games are that start to come out. We're already getting a feel for that with Gala, and Gala is pretty substantive, um, which is why I think Gala will probably be around for the next 20 years. I would hope that Myria would be. Obviously, I'm heavily invested in it, but I would say it's a much riskier thing at this point with Myria. Um, I did have a chance to talk to the CEO. Oh, my gosh, I was impressed. The CEO of Myria was amazing. So um, that's part of what sold me on going so heavy on Myria. All right. <laughs> Okay, just checking, catching up on some of these. Cloud Macro wants us to look at YF Die. Let's look at. I haven't thought about YF Die in so long. <laughs> now let's see. YF Die. Now this. Ah. Uh, Okay. So here it shows, and I don't even remember how high it got, but it was coming off of these highs. So it's been trading, went as low as $66. It's up at $311. I just don't know enough about, I don't remember what it is YF Die does. There's so many projects. So let's take a look at it. YF Die. Bridging the world's traditional finance and decentralized networks. Yeah. Yield farming, launch pad, safe swap, safe trade, staking. Okay. Hmm. I can't see much from that price as far as my expectation. In fact, that it's really traded weird. I don't understand what's going on with these charts. That I can understand. It goes so flat here. Like, did everyone think it was dead? I, I don't know on the fundamental history. Looks like everyone thought it was dead. And then it's like, oh, wait, it's not dead. And it went spiked all the way up and says, oh, wait, it might be dead. And it really flatlined here again. And then it's running up again. My concern would be, is it going to flatline again? Um, I just would have to know more about it. I'm not... Um, personally buying any YF die. Bill Gardner says, yeah, Immutable X is going to be great. Immutable X transaction fees are cheap, just like their price. <clears throat> Uno Sean says, Immutable X has been one of the most undervalued coins in the whole space. VV, HRO, and some. Nice. Cool. Um, yeah, caught up on those chats. Um, let's do our giveaway. Um, we have actually, um, we're going to be giving away today, um, what, 375 won. So let's take a look at won charts. If you're really smart, you already have won's Twitter pulled up um, because, well, hint, hint, it is really good to follow won's Twitter because... A lot of my questions come from Juan's Twitter feed. And the first person to give us the response that I can see. Now, we had this faux pas that happened where I asked for um, an answer, but it's an answer that YouTube doesn't like, and it filters out from the comments. And so it was really weird that the answer wasn't coming through. But let's take a look at Juan Chain's charts see where they're at now we had some big activity that brought it up and it was running all the way up to like 36 cents it's come back down come back down considerably for another chance for those that are interested that want to pick it up cheap now one chain has been working behind the scenes like 
developing some of the best bridging technology and continues to make so many partnerships, I have a hard time keeping track of all the partnerships. And because nobody's really looking or thinking about decentralized finances and bridges right now, they haven't gotten a lot of focus and that the main huge media outlets in crypto aren't talking about them and stuff. But I, what I like to do is invest in projects that I think are doing all the right things behind the scenes because eventually <clears throat> the public becomes aware of that, right? So I invested in a project called Axie Infinity like two years before anybody was talking about it because they were one of the first blockchain games. And um, I thought blockchain gaming would be an idea that would take off. And sure enough, it did. And they continued to work and do a lot of things to it. And the team reaching out to the team, they were super cool. They gave me some axes to try playing the game and everything. Um, and they were actually giving people axes way back. This was before anybody knew who they were um, when they were trying to get people to play the game because like nobody knew what Axie Infinity was. And um, then Axie Infinity became a household crypto name that anyone in the crypto space had heard of Axie Infinity. And they did tremendously well. So one chain, um, one of the reasons I agreed to a strategic relationship with them is because I like the work that they put in behind the scenes and they have some of the brightest doing some of the coolest things with trustless bridges in the space. And I think at some point that will hit public awareness or it should. And when it does, we should see some really nice runs on this. Um, so right now it's in this zone uh let's look at a smaller time frame okay just to look at what it's doing interesting okay well it's come back down to some levels let's draw in some levels here yeah that was their previous low that was so amazing What's it bouncing off of right now? Uh, we'll see, but gosh, anything in here, um, it's, it gets pretty juicy again. It gets really juicy down here. So yeah, let's see. Great question, Eli Stanky. How low do you think Bumper can get in this dip? Well, what would I love to see? Even though I have a bunch of it, I'd love to see it go to like a penny or something. Will that happen? Unfortunately, I don't think it will. Um, it's at about five cents. It was recently seven to eight cents. Um, so I, I don't know, but uh, I would love to see it go lower so that I can pick up some more for cheaper. I have a bunch, um, a whole bunch, but I would love a whole bunch more. Unfortunately, a lot of the new liquidity they'll be getting in a number of weeks, like three weeks and then in six weeks, I don't know that we'll still be at these cheap prices by then. I hope so. Um, let's see. Pull up bumper. Um, if you follow my channel a lot, you're probably familiar with Bumper. If you haven't seen those interviews, you might want to check it out. Bumper is my number one pick for the highest possibility for returns. Um, now, I don't use the word probability because it's at a riskier stage in its business development life cycle that maybe it doesn't survive. But if it does survive, what they're doing is groundbreaking. Um, it's got a more efficient way of handling a, uh, one of the ways that major hedge funds and stuff hedge their risk um, for their portfolios and stuff. And it revolutionizes the way that people can hedge their risk and creates greater efficiencies there. So what they're doing is literally earth shattering and it, it needed smart contracts to be able to do something like that. So if they're successful with that, um, their market cap is, you know, under 5 million. And it's a market cap that I could see going to 5 billion or more if their vision is realized. So the bigger question is, will it get realized? I don't know. Probably, maybe, I hope so.
All right. Okay, here's your question. Um, this is for our one chain giveaway. Now, for the answer, um, if I select you as the winner because you came across with the correct answer on my feed first, then I will need to get your Telegram handle um, so that we can exchange and get your MetaMask address or your WandMask address uh, through Telegram because if you try to paste it in YouTube, it will just delete it. So four hours ago, one chain posted a tweet and they're talking about the recent addition of another chain to their network. What is that chain? I love that they're, they're using the hashtag. We are all connected. I remember one chain's big launch and they talked about making all these chains interoperable. And I remember that was 2017. I was trying to figure out how that might even work because I was like, how is that even going to work? And so they're realizing a whole bunch of their promises that they made way back then in literally connecting all these different chains, chains together. And sailing on 2021, it says Talos. And sailing, I definitely have your information. So um, I'll probably get it if you PM me through Discord, actually, um, then... Yes, you are our winner, Telos. Tel, I'm I, Tel, Telos, Telos. Okay. Pronunciation today is not my thing. So, from humble beginnings to numerous industry firsts, OneChain is a true, tr true trailblazer of the blockchain industry. With the recent addition of at Hello Telos, Hello Telos, OneChain now connects more than twenty public networks. Hashtag We're All Connected. All right. Good job, Juan Chain. All right. Um, I've got a little bit more time. What else do you want me to look at? While you're thinking about that, let me pull up some details on Bumper and why I'm so bullish on this one. Now, I don't have a magic crystal ball. I don't know if Bumper is ultimately going to make it. I sure hope. I do plan to buy even more Bumper. Um I am participating in their liquidity program right now that if you stake on Uniswap version 2.0, um, some bumper and some USDC, you can get some rewards. Um, but bumper, I'm a big fan of holding for the long term. So their current market cap as listed on CoinGecko is $3 million. Um, realize that only one fifth of their supply is in circulation. So probably more of the tokens are going to come into circulation. So market cap at 3 million. Um, if the market cap on this project went to 3 billion or 5 billion or 15 or 30 billion, then you would see over a thousand X here. In fact, in some of those scenarios, you would see like a 3000 X or 4000 X. So a thousand dollars worth of bumper could go to a million or 3 million if that happens. And I, and it's if that happens, right? So why does bumper have the potential to do that? Well, let me talk about what bumper is doing. Um, see if their website has some resources to help us out. Crypto price protection. Bumper's unique crypto price protection gives you invincibility from the volatility gremlins. It's funny, and it's kind of got this old arcade theme to it, right? Um, yeah. Okay, so this kind of helps us give the story. So you don't need to protect your crypto from market crashes, but it's smart to do it. And so it says you need to protect your crypto from market crashes. Pick a price floor that you don't want your assets to fall below. So let's use an example of, say we can use it on Immutable X. We're just going to use that. And um, say we wanted to load up an Immutable X. And say when it hit a dollar, we had loaded up on Immutable X and we had protected it with bumper. Now, it's not working that you can protect your immutable X with bumper yet. So what we would do is we would decide what price level we want to protect it at. So say we had bought it at a dollar and we were concerned. We didn't know if it 
it would go up or down if we wanted it to go up. But if it didn't, we wanted to protect our price on it. So we decided to protect the price at, you can protect it at the 85% level, the 90% level, or the 95% level. And say I decide to protect it at the 90% level. Well, as you can see, like say I bought it back here for a dollar when it was going up. It, it did go up and then it went down. So it went to $1.14 and then it broke down. So I would be eligible actually to cash in and, and get my protection. So get all mine that I protected out at the 90 cent level. Uh, so I took a 10% haircut and I had to pay a little bit of premium, but now I can use all those funds to buy it at the 82% level. Or I can wait a little bit, see if it comes cheaper. But now I can actually, even though I lost some, I didn't take this full ride down. And if I want, I can actually get all that at the 90% level back out and go ahead and buy at the 82% level. So how does it work? Because the way I just described it makes it seem like it's some kind of insurance product. And it's not really an insurance product. What they do when you protect your price is that there are people that are putting stable coins up on their platform for a yield, right? And so what happens when it hits that protection point at the 90 cents, it swaps, it would swap all my immutable X over to bumpered immutable X. And what it would actually do is cash out of immutable X or it wouldn't swap. It's already done that swap to bumper immutable X, but at 90 cents, it actually uses the USDC or the stable coins that are backing it to go ahead and buy out the position and or it swaps the immutable X into stable coins at that point. And so it's no longer like taking this ride down. So now if it starts to go up when it hits that 90% or that 90 cents level again, if it hits this, it'll swap it back into immutable X. So it can take the ride up. So when I cash in my my bumper, uh, my position, it's already holding the stable coins for it because it sold the immutable X and bought the stable coins to protect that price at that level. And so the efficiencies that this creates is a lot better than the efficiencies created by options trading and uh, which is a mechanism that Wall Street has used for like 60 years. And so um, it creates, as Jonathan said, right now, even 10% greater efficiency than what um, options creates for protecting prices. So um, that that's a massive improvement on an industry where trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars are spent. They're creating something that's now 10% more efficient. Th that is one of the biggest financial discoveries in a long time, if I'm understanding it right, and I'm pretty sure I am. So that's why I'm so bullish on bumper. Do I know for sure that it's all going to work out? I don't. I mean, you could see some big wigs like Goldman Sachs maybe copy this and steal it. And I don't know if it's protected and, and run with this idea, but this idea is the most revolutionary idea um, in a long time. Um, as revolutionary as the whole idea of DeFi was um, in the summer of 2020 when DeFi took off. And I saw projects like uh, that were in the DeFi space like Aave go over a thousand X in a period of just a couple months. So that's why I'm excited about it. Let's see. Base Labs wants us to look at XFlow. Let me check out XFlow for a second. Um, I'm not finding XFlow on Coin Market Cap. XFlow on Coin Gecko. Not finding on Coin Gecko. Oh, I spelled that wrong. XFlow. Not finding it either on Coin Gecko. Telos sailing on 2021. So Telos.
Okay, let me share my screen. Telos has had a massive price correction. Its current market cap is only forty-five million. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't realize it had come down so much from where it was. So it had been trading dollar forty. So it's come down ninety percent. And sometimes this doesn't even reflect how high it really went. Um, so it's come down at least ninety percent. Home to the fastest Ethereum virtual machine. Tell us is faster, cost-effective, greener, and honest. Well, that's good that they tell us they're honest. Um, beyond function, we are leading the way for a better Web3. So I haven't followed Telos really closely. There are a lot of projects vying for this space. And I think there will be lots of winners. But um, the winner, like Immutable X, that I'm following closely... One of the reasons I'm following closely is there's a lot of other projects I am following that are closely related to it, right? So VV's um, stuff is minted on Immutable X. Um, HRO is muted uh, is on Immutable X. Alluvium is on Immutable X. Um, in fact, you know, Gods Unchained is on Immutable X. And I still, I don't think I've sold, gosh, I don't, maybe... Maybe I've sold one or two of my cards, but I, uh, I might not have even sold one or two of them and have all my original Gods Unchained cards from the Genesis edition. Um, so Telos, I haven't been following super closely because um, their recent partnership with Chain is the first bigger intersection with a project that I am really interested in. So it says no front running, fast and scalable, no gas fees, decentralized. So this is similar to a lot of the other stuff. Um, so on the fundamentals behind it, I don't know, and, and I'm sure they are there. I don't know what are its points, really. I would have to have a friend that's like really bullish on this project tell me why they're so bullish on it um, because I'm just unaware of what there is behind this fundamentally that makes it a strong competitor for the future. I would imagine that they do have some of those things and I'm just unaware of them. Um, so I like where the price is. The price has come back down tremendously. Let's see, let's look at it on this. So back to the question we had earlier that we discussed, it, it can't be that easy just buying and holding through um, for a period of like holding for a couple of years and waiting till everyone gets bullish. Um, it, it is that simple. One of the challenges too, that's like if they're successful in shutting off some exchanges and closing is ha paying enough attention to move stuff off exchanges. We do have wallets now that are probably pretty good. Like back in the days, like if you participated in buying something in the early days you would buy it they would make an erc20 of whatever their token was but then later when they actually made their chain they would migrate it over and you would have to migrate yours over and you literally had to pay attention and they would have some migration period and if you didn't migrate yours over then yours became worthless and so you had to stay somewhat attuned or you would miss the migration over now a lot of stuff it's like they have bridges and other things they didn't have so that if you're holding it in a wallet that you have the keys to and you secure those keys, it can be that simple. Obviously, not every project you buy might succeed. Hopefully, everyone does. But, you know, this is early stage investing and a lot of these projects will fail. Now, will they fail in the next four years? Some of them, but most of them shouldn't. So... What's up, 158 beats? Good to see you, brother. All right, any other questions, any other thoughts you wanted to go over um, while I'm live with you? Are you concerned? Are you scared about, like, all this FUD from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission? Is it weighing on you? Um, how are you feeling? Are you feeling bullish? Are you feeling, like, 
oh my gosh, I'm scared that they're going to shut off everything and the uh, U.S. will be able to, you know, stifle cryptocurrency completely. I will give you a little bit more perspective on that. So it's fair to say of all the countries in the world, one of the most authoritarian is China. In China, banned cryptocurrency in China for like, what, three years ago, two years ago. And um, so a lot of miners moved out of China to other countries. However, 20% of the mining was still coming out of China even after the ban. So even China wasn't completely successful in getting rid of crypto from their own. And they have a lot more authoritarian stranglehold than the U.S. does. So uh, we'll see. Um, seems like SEC, you know, the people that are making these decisions at the SEC, you know, they seem like they're buddies out of the people that made that decision in China. And the whole reason China did it was for the same reason. They wanted to push everyone to their central bank digital currency. So, all right. Um, a lot of innovation comes out of China. I'm sad that ever happened. Um, it really hurt Polkadot um, because a lot of your innovators and a lot of people in the crypto space were out of China. And it's hurt some of the developers that were out of there and like just slowed things down. It slowed things down for the world because look, China has some smart people. So I, it's unfortunate that that's happened. And it seems like maybe they're reversing that. Maybe we'll see. 158 says always bullish. Well, good to hear. Well, congratulations sailing for uh, your win over one chain. And um, thanks all for joining us. And we will see you all next week. So I will be on on Monday joining Jordan. Uh, Jordan, I'm trying to remember Jordan's channel name. But anyway, he's one of my Omi homies. And we usually, um, I'm joining him for the Around the Comiverse. And then at a minimum, I'll also see you on Wednesday when I'm joined by Paul. So we will see you all next week. Remember, like, look. The crypto market, it goes through these downturns like this. Just know that good decisions made during these pullbacks lead to life-changing ones when the market does turn around because the rains will come again. And some of these projects that are working really hard and continuing to be head down and work their butts off, some of them are absolutely going to flourish when those rains come again. And those that, of you that have found them, invested in them, and been patient with those projects, well, your portfolios are going to flourish too. Thanks so much, everyone. We'll see you soon. Came into the space, chasing all of the games, chasing the pumps and all of the hype trains. But like in life, uh, shit, right before you could, it was not to buy when it was pouring like a rain, make it should. Sure. I buy when it's down, don't chase the boats that I miss, uh. Cause I always made the time in mind I sit the one out cause I'm patient like that And I'll wait for the right time I sell when it's high, I buy when it's low They call me rich, they call me smart I'm just a rainmaker running the show Calculated investments I don't leave with my heart The principles are simple, they're leaving a lot Why when it's boring, just gotta be smart I sell when it's high, like all the channels they pump it That's when I was selling your parabolic and dump it They call me rich, they call me smart I'm a rainmaker, making my own start I'm with the future, learning the past Makes the time fly by, yeah it's going so fast The game plan is mine, I'll own it now When I reach the top, hey it's asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker Investments I love And I follow what I learn Not relying on luck uh, Time is never better But time like the present The next five years is a gift And it's feeling like heaven I'm committed to learn Studying to know that Nothing comes easy But with knowledge the game show Thinking at this wrong consumer will come a bear market Learning and growing And when it's slow would be the target They say it's come out Bitcoin is dead The massive decreases Can get to your head Sticking around The time is better I'm strong like that I'll let the others be fretters Two years time The ball will bring back the games that makes it worth the effort cause here comes the rain So let's go rain makers, let's make it all happen They go with the hate, they the haters be crapping I'm here for five years, let's do this together The time is right, the time could be better They call me rich, they call me smart I'm a rain maker, making my own star I'm with the future, learning the past Makes the time fly by, 
years going so fast This game plan is mine, I'll own it now When I reach the top, haters asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not rely on luck uh, Haters be hating, but time to slow down Addressing what they say when I'm wearing my crown They're chasing green candles like someone who was new I got a vision that was bigger, helping me to push through I'm still human and sometimes it is rough and that's what makes me special, simply I stay tough Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh.